morning guys real 11 t i haven't made a video in a while and i was going through and i was looking at some of my other videos and uh a thread came up on classic camp stoves about the um optimus 77 uh storm cooker which is uh this lead mark kit is a clone of and i went back through my videos and when i first started making a whole bunch of youtube videos about camp stoves the lead mark kit was not available so i do have a couple videos size comparison videos and the video when uh, I announced hey this kits available again but I realized I'd never really done a detailed look at this lead mark cook set and uh, some of the modifications I've done to it how it comes uh, so I figured I'd do that right now so basically what we have is the lead mark uh, it's listed as a lightweight alcohol cook set at campmore.com uh, I've seen them in a couple other places. I don't know any other places that have them right now. Uh, but basically, um, what you get in the box is the cook set. You get uh, a Trangia clone burner. This is not a Trangia burner. And it's actually held together with this pleather strap. So these are the two things that I replace. And basically, this one here, the, the components have been replaced already. Okay, so... This is the box that comes in. Kind of interesting. Ideal for, I don't know if I'll get this to focus, but. Ideal for camping and trekking. It's also ideal for prepping. They should put that on there too. If you want a cook set that you can put in a go bag or a vehicle kit, or if you want something that you want to just use around the house, this is uh, not a bad little sit set to have. It's all self-contained. Oh. I put in some scotch Bright from Walmart with soap impregnated, it's just something that I do. And this kit you see here, uh, I keep it in the box, this is, I've got user kits, this is one that I just put together and put in the basement. Uh, I can give it to someone as a gift or, you know, if I need extras, I've got them. Uh, but basically, you know, this is a copy of a Swedish design, this is the upper and lower windscreen going together, okay, and then your burner. Well, your burner would set down in here, upper windscreen here, and then there are two pots and a frying pan, basically. Uh, obviously, one's a little bit larger than the other. I don't know the exact volume on them. I suspect that the, the readings that are on the box are incorrect. But basically, what this does is it sets right down in there. Air can draft through these holes and up through the windscreen. The flame is protected from any wind coming, you know, laterally so that it doesn't get blown off away from the pot. All the flame, even if it does get disturbed a little bit, is pretty much coming in contact with the pot. It's a very efficient system. You got your fry pan, which you could, you know, set right on there. It works just fine. Um, I don't typically use this for frying a whole lot. This also works as a lid. You can set it on there either way. And it works on either pot. So, you know, these kits cost about $20. Um, and they and that is, you know, with the, the Chinese burner and the pleather strap, which is serviceable. Um, you don't, one thing you don't have with the Chinese burner is uh, you don't have any simmer ability. And... Um, even if you didn't have a simmering with a Trangia, you could pry the uh, O-ring out of it and snuff the stove. Uh, but with this one, it's kind of like in there, the uh, seal. So it's a lot harder to snuff this stove out than a Trangia. Now, the actual Trangia one, you have your simmering, all right? So you could set this, you know, and this is really useful. This seems like a really primitive thing. But if you were ever to actually practically try and use this system, if you're going to make pasta or something like that, you know, you get the water boiling and then you have to simmer it down. I mean, that's just what you have to do. Um, and this is a practical way of doing that, you know, and it's really not that hard. A little practice. You have like a multi-tool or something there, a pair of pliers. You can pull it off, reset it, put it back on top of the burner. Now you can see the construction of this here. Uh, maybe if I get the light All right. There's an O-ring in here that you could pry out, but you really don't even need to do that with this system 
because all you do is you set this to the closed position and you snuff your flame out just like that. So that allows you to not worry so much about metering fuel exactly out um, because uh, you can just snuff it out and then once it's cool you can seal it with this and then you know go about your business. Um, as I said basically I replaced the burner this is a uh, this is the packaging for the Transgia burner. Um, you can get those. I get mine at Camp Saver. You can find them all over the place on the internet. And it basically, it's it's 11 or $12. It's the burner, the cap, and the simmering. And it all nests together into one kind of unit. Just like that. It will not come apart unless you pull it apart. It's a... Uh, this one came dented a little bit. You can see the big Trangia logo on the bottom of the modern ones. You know, uh, so basically then what you're looking at here, the entire kit together um, uh, runs you about $40, which is fairly inexpensive, especially if you're putting this together in a kit. You know, if you get multiples of them, you know, this sort of thing can get really expensive. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about about uh, the modification, kind of got ahead of myself there with the total cost, but included in that total cost is an Arno strap. Campmore has these as well. This is the 24 inch. They come in three different lengths. You can use any one you want, um, the, but um, the 24 inch one, you really don't have to trim. Uh, the other ones, you could leave long because you could pull them off and you could use them for for you know other uses um, but the 24 inch one is the cheapest one and if you're gonna put two of these kits together they conveniently come in a two-pack you know these things are typically used you know to hold sleeping bags you know on packs and stuff like that but the Arno straps um, this is very similar in design uh, to the ones that come on the actual Trangia kits um, Usually they, you know, they have slightly different webbing that has a Trangia logo all along the webbing, but this is, uh, this buckle exactly here is, is very similar to the ones they use, if not made by the same company. I'm not exactly sure, but it's very similar. Um, go and look up any Trangia kit, you know, on the internet, and what you'll find is, uh, is something that looks very, very similar to this. Um, uses, I mean, uh, this these kits are really good for uh, stuff that you're going to be boiling pasta rice. I I used one of these for a couple of months before I got my rice cooker uh, to make brown rice at least three or four times a week. And uh, so I mean that brown rice is one of those things where you got to get it boiling and then simmer for like a long time, 25, 30 minutes, for that rice to to cook up. Um, and it was great, you know, and didn't have any problems, you know, used it, cleaned it out, used it the next day, cleaned it out. Um, I don't know how well, you know, this is a fairly mild aluminum. It's, it, uh, it dents easily. It's, uh, it's not super hard aluminum. Um, so I don't know. I suspect it would be it etched by, uh, any type of really acidic foods. I don't know if I would make sauce in this. Um, uh, and I don't know how well this is, this frying pan would, would hold up to actually really frying things before it gets pitted to the point where it's really hard to clean. But, you know, uh, another use for it other than, uh, preparing boiling, boil type meals is, uh, obviously, uh, water disinfection. Okay. Um, so that's, uh, a, a main reason that I have them in my kits. Um, if you find some questionable water, uh, in my kits, I typically keep these with the, uh, the heat gas line de-icer, uh, the methanol gas line de-icer, um, which is in the yellow bottle. Did I say that? I don't know. It, there's two different kinds of heat. Red, which is iso heat, which is isopropanol, and then the yellow bottle is methanol, 99% methanol, 1% proprietary ingredient, according to the MSDS sheet. Anyway, the methanol works really well in every alcohol so I've ever tried it in. Um, it is more toxic than the denatured alcohol that you might pick up, uh, say, at Home Depot. Uh, that's about $15 a gallon, which is cheaper, 
but you're left with, uh, you know, how do I transport this? If this is going to be for a bug in option that you're going to use in your home, uh, in place of something like a sterno, in case the, the, the gas goes out or, or your electric stove doesn't work, um, that's really not an issue. You know, you just need to have uh, something to dispense it with, a clearly marked uh, plastic bottle to dispense it with, um, and then you can just dispense it into the gallon from the gallon jug into the smaller container that you're going to be using. Um, but in a kit, you need kind of a robust kind of a, a bottle. Uh, the heat ones seem to be pretty decent before uh, the seal is broken on them. You know, obviously it's designed uh, as a one-use item that you open and you dump into your fuel tank on your car. Um, so uh, that is basically uh, what heat is designed for. So if I were to use heat and try and stretch that one 12 ounce bottle over several days, I think probably what I would do is make sure that I was careful with it. They do have a twist cap. They used to, I remember the days when they just had a pop-off cap that was definitely not designed to ever go back on there. Um, but now they, they have a twist childproof cap and uh, it does go back on. It makes somewhat of a seal. I would say it makes a splash proof seal. I wouldn't want to store it upside down in my gear and then go hiking for a while because I think it would leak out. Um, and methanol is fairly toxic, um, so you don't want to get it all over your skin. You know, um, you don't want to breathe the vapors too much. Uh, I have to admit, though, that I've I've burned these on denatured alcohol indoors quite a bit. I never felt lightheaded or anything like that. Um, uh, I don't believe alcohol gives off carbon monoxide. I might be wrong on that. But uh, as far as an indoor option, the other thing about these is an indoor option that's really great is if you were to have a spill, alcohol can be put out with water as opposed to petroleum fuels. If you have a fire, you know, you, you know, fuel spills down the, the side of your table and the whole thing's on fire, you, you know, you have to have a fire extinguisher or baking soda or something to deal with a petroleum fire and they can get out of hand really fast. The alcohol fire, this is another reason why alcohol stoves are popular on boats. A lot of marine stoves run on alcohol because they can be put out with water. Okay, so that's something else to consider. You know, something like this might be safe to use, you know, if you find yourself at a shelter. You know, I don't know that they would let you use it, but it might be, it would definitely be safer than trying to light up, you know, a petroleum stove indoors uh, to run this. It's essentially just slightly more dangerous than Sterno, uh, basically, to put it on your fire scale. Uh, it is definitely higher output than Sterno is. Um, and the fuel, of course, is cheaper and it's a commodity. So, yeah, that's just a little overview on this. Like I said, you can put the modified kit together for about $40. Um, you know, obviously, you might have to pay shipping there. If you do multiple ones, you can obviously cut down on the shipping as a, as a thing. Um, so this puts this as really kind of the lowest price option. The, uh, the Primus Classic Trail and the uh, Stanley Cook set that I did was about $45 dollars okay that was cash and carry from walmart um but that has some limitations you know the butane fuel is not great in extremely cold weather alcohol isn't great in cold weather but it doesn't suffer from the problems that butane suffers from in that butane you you got a cycle of evaporative cooling that'll actually cool the canister down and make it less efficient as long as you can keep the alcohol warm before you light it, it will light. If alcohol is allowed to get extremely cold, it is difficult or impossible to light. Okay, so basically that's uh, what we're looking at here um, in terms of uh, this as, a, as an option for prepping or hiking. You know, this would be a decent first cook set for, uh, you know, Boy Scouts or Cub Scouts. A lot of uh, troops dislike alcohol stoves because the flame is very difficult to see outdoors in daylight. And so, you know, there's a hazard there that, uh, you know, anyone should be aware of, but especially a younger person using this, that you have to make sure it's lit. And it's, the most dangerous thing is not just burning yourself. I'm sorry. The most dangerous thing, uh, instead of burning yourself, would be trying to refuel it while it is uh, burning. That would be extremely hazardous. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe. Uh, any questions about any sort of camp stoves, I might be able to answer or uh, 
I might be able to find out for you or, you know, check out Classic Camp Stoves. There's tons of people there. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.